For anyone who's not familiar, Opeth is one of my favorite bands. Excellent, love it. One of my favorite albums of all time is Blackwater Park. I've been singing the praise of this album for so incredibly long. I thought the production was amazing until, you know, started learning more about production. I'm like, okay, there's still something magical and beautiful about it for what it is and for the time period, even though it's not perfect. And then, then I got this plugin. This bad boy is called the Corniff AIP or Amplified Instrument Processor. Highly recommend it. Hashtag not sponsored. The co-host on my podcast and my producer, Casey Sable, recommended I use this. And the thing is absolutely magical. But I'm pretty sure this plugin ruined this album for me. And I'll show you why. If you haven't already checked out my podcast, go ahead and click the link. It'll be around here or in the description. Had on several guests you would know already. Had on Dovidas last time, Bradley Hall, Anthony Vincent. Having much more interesting and useful musical conversation than what you're going to get in most other places. Anyway, let's get into it. Why and how did I ruin Blackwater Park for myself? Before we get started, you can't just listen to this on your phone speakers. You need to have some type of earbuds or at least something that's a larger speaker driver. Listening to it on a pair of monitors would be great. I would highly recommend that. All right, so I'm already 99% sure that this is going to get copyright struck, but it's whatever. I'll live with it. One of my favorite Opeth songs, Bleak. Let's just listen to a little sampling of it. It's the song we all know and love, right? You know, right at the beginning, that that main riff to kind of guide us in, that little Phrygian dominant or Byzantine or whatever thing going on. Cool. Now I'm going to turn on the Amplified Instrument plugin by Corniff. Now let's listen to it. Don't hear a difference really, right? Now I'm going to play it back and I'm going to turn it on and off as we're listening to it. This is off. On. Oh, off. On. Holy shit. <laughs> this is fucking just screaming the entire time loudly over top of the whole thing that I had never heard before. So when Casey recommended this plugin, obviously the first thing I do after seeing him use it on our stuff, I go home and I start recording stuff to test out and I start messing with it. I start trying to learn it, understand what's too much, what's too little, what the pinpoints are. It has this beautiful function here called the insufferable mid-range filter, which is amazing. <laughs> so if I go back and play it. Take off the inseparable mid-range filter. That's all of the terrible things. All of them. What many producers or mixing engineers will do is they'll sit down and like surgically remove just screaming frequencies that are coming out of specifically heavily distorted guitars. It's a very common thing. This plugin basically makes it so you find out, you know, essentially what key and what timbre and like all the gain structure stuff is that you're pinpointing on the specific frequency that happens to be happening in this mix. And then algorithmically is just like, pfft, like we're, we're killing those and, and we're figuring out through equations, the octaves above that, that's the little octave range button that has there in order to reduce as much of the shit as possible. Fair warning, this might hurt your ears. I'm gonna try and make it quieter in post, but this is what it sounds like isolated. Just makes you wanna kill yourself. I did also just a little bit of a dip at 2.6K as well. Just a little bit, like three dB. And it just so quickly cleans it up. Just so quickly, here. Off. On. Off. All of that noise, that coming through, is eating up headroom. Now, it's not eating up as much headroom as, say, something coming from the low end of the spectrum, but it's definitely 
not allowing the master to be as loud and badass as it could be. So you might say, well, with all of this like abrasion in here, it adds to the excitement of the mix, right? You, you could say that. It's also, you know, could come from the more blackened aspect of what Opeth do. You know, there's, there's all kinds of stylistic argumentation that could be made there. But knowing my producer brain, you have the opportunity to make the guitars so much louder and so much more in your face and you can hear more detail of it. But this is gone. Like, even over the quieter sections, it still rings over because the guitars are ringing over. A perfect example. If we go to the Drapery Falls. Remember this? I love, love that lead part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like lazy, wispy, haunted, elegant, enticing. It's really cool, right? But you still have that, that at the exact same fucking frequency. Watch what happens. Off, on, off, on. It becomes that soft, delicate thing you want. So it's not just a, oh, it's black metal stylistic choice. Like for the clean, jazzy or folkier moments, it still fucking screams over top of that because it's the same electric guitar, most likely using a very similar signal chain. Again, I'm gonna A beat again. Off. makes a world of difference. It wasn't until I got this plugin that I realized how loud that was. It's uh, uh, insufferably loud. <laughs> and my brain didn't even register it. Now I think there's two reasons for this. One, we're kind of programmed and brainwashed for lack of a better term into this hard, aggressive style of music. So a lot of that's usually there, and we kind of tune it out. We just think, oh, that's a part of the abrasion, that's a part of the noise. I completely forget the second reason, so sorry. I didn't script this out, okay? Now, I do still love listening to this album, but I remember specifically on one ride home, like a week or two ago, from a hangout with the boys after using this plugin a bunch that week prior, listening to the Blackwater Park album on the way home, and in the car, this frequency was just screaming at me, and I'd listen to it in that car, on those speakers, in that format, a hundred times before, at least. My brain never knew it was there. It filtered it out. It will make it harder for the guitars to be intelligible, but I mean, the guitars are already very intelligible on this album. They could be more so, but they're already very intelligible. They could be even more intelligible if that's gone and it's not harassing your ears even when your ears don't realize it. I'm shocked that Steven Wilson produced this and mixed this. Shocked. He does incredibly clean productions, man. Man. Granted, this was 2001, so I mean, you know, we all learn over time, period. And even with that frequency screaming, I still think it's an excellent album. I still think it's very well produced, but I just don't know if I'm gonna be able to listen to this song casually ever again. <laughs> maybe, maybe I'll be able to do it again someday. It was just so world shattering to me because of this assumption in my brain that just got fucking knocked down that I'd, I'm only going to be able to focus on it. And if you're curious, I mean, listen to Watershed. I've listened to Watershed. I've even imported some of the fucking tracks here and tried to do the insufferable mid-range reduction. Doesn't affect it because that's gone. Jens Bogren ditched that shit. He got rid of it. Air Apparent is massive and there's none of that noisy, screamy crap and it's arguably the best, if not one of the best productions Opeth has ever had. So I don't hate this album. I don't think I like this album any less. I still love it, but it does make it harder for me to listen to, at least in the short term. And 
I'm, it just brings up so many questions to me. For people that have been following my channel for a while, and especially the live stream or anything with Song Suggestion Friday, and we listen along and I point things out, I've had several fans comment to me, man, you've really helped me gain more knowledge about music and mixing and production, but also you've helped me be pickier as a listener and a lot of the stuff that I used to like listening to, I don't like listening to as much anymore. And you know, it's good to grow, it's good to gain understanding and knowledge. But I just had that happen to me and it's freaky. <laughs> so what do you guys think about this? Let me know in the comments below. Anyway, I don't know. I'm sitting here questioning all of my decisions. Check out my podcast. See you later. <laughs>